Hello everyone, welcome for the DMS lecture. Uh, in previous lecture, we have seen <coughs> the design uh, calculation of a resistance of belt, then belt width, uh, resistance of belt in upper and lower run. Uh, then we have calculated the maximum and minimum tension and the number of plies. Okay, so here <coughs> in this lecture, we will continue the previous problem. Uh, the remaining design we will discuss today. Start with the calculation of diameter of pulley. So DP is equal to KPL into KP into I, where KP is a general value, general value of coefficient depending upon the strength of the ply of the fabric. Okay. KP is the coefficient depend upon the type of pulley as a crown pulley is there, flat pulley is there. So depend upon the type of pulley, that coefficient we have to consider, that is the coefficient of for pulley, that we have considered as a 1.1. And KPL is 140. Uh, in previous uh, uh, problem, that is a problem number one, I have given that table. You can refer that table. So the diameter of pulley, 140 multiply by 1.1 multiply by 5. So DP is 770 mm. Let's see the calculation for the width of the pulley. Referring PhD page number 7.54, the selecting standard width for a pulley that is W is equal to B plus 50. So 650 plus 50. So width of pulley is equal to 700 mm. Now next one, calculation for bearing pressure of the pulley uh, while considering the head pulley is a driving pulley. In figure number three, the arrangement is shown over there. So the bearing pressure is uh, depending upon the maximum uh, total pressure, uh, total tension, that is a maximum and minimum tension into the belt. So divided by area or whatever the uh, belt is lapped over the pulley. So bearing pressure P is equal to T1 plus T2 divided by pi D P into B multiplied by alpha divided by 360 degree. So putting all the values, what we get? The bearing pressure, which is uh, induced is 0 0.0. 1953 Newton per mm square and the maximum allowable bearing pressure is 0 0.4 Newton per mm square. So uh, our pulley is safe for bearing failure. Next one, calculation for selecting the driving motor power. So here with the help of this driving motor power, you can select a standard motor. So how we can calculate the power? P, that is a uh, power for motor, is equal to Ka into P into velocity, that is actual velocity, divided by driving efficiency. So the coefficient of adhesive, Ka, between the belt and roller, we have considered as a 1.2. P, that is the effect of pull on the belt, which is in a kgf. Velocity, that I said, uh, belt velocity, meter per second, and the efficiency. Normally, uh, the belt drive having a issue related to tension. So that's why some sleep phenomena is occurring. So the driving efficiency of the belt conveyor, we are considering 85%. So the motor power, after the calculation, what we get, that is a 16.61 kilowatt. Now, uh, from PHG page number 5.124, we have to select a standard motor, where uh, if you want, you can draw the diagram of that uh, motor type. So, we have selecting three-phase motor uh, with the standard power of 18.5 kilowatt. So, uh, and the speed of rotation of the motor is 1500 RPM. Now, 
our velocity is uh, near about to two meter per second. So we need to reduction uh, because uh, from motor we get near about 1500 RPM speed, but in actual practices, it is required very less. It's uh, near about uh, 300 meter per second. That is 300 RPM, revolution per meter, uh, re RPM. Uh, so to achieve that much speed, we need a reduction gearbox. So here we are not proper, uh, fully designed that gearbox. Initially we designed only the uh, reduction ratio. So the calculation uh, to calculate the reduction ratio, n is equal to velocity. That is a maximum output speed. That velocity we have is 1.68 actual velocity. So that velocity we need to convert into the speed. So v uh, n is equal to v by pi d by 60. So the output velocity uh, output speed of the uh, belt conveyor, or you can say uh, the operating speed of the belt conveyor is. 41.67 rpm but our motor having speed near to 1500 rpm so that's why we need to uh, use a reduction gearbox so overall reduction that is uh, input divided by output so ir that is a overall reduction is equal to 36 now uh, with respect to the gear design, we normally uh, design a gear which is uh, having a speed reduction ratio less than eight, i is equal to eight in a single stage or six, maximum six. So here uh, we have to convert that 36 into two stages. So we are selecting two stage reduction gearbox. First stage, uh, you can go with the helical gear. If you want a uh, proper utilization of the torque and the power, uh, sudden jerks and other para, uh, other issues you have to avoid, then you can go uh, with the first stage with the helical gearbox, helical gears, and second stage with the help of spur gear. If uh, if you consider with the economical point of view or production point of view, we can manufacture both stages by using spur gearbox. So here uh, we have selected both stages with the help of spur gearbox. So for first stage, value of I is equal to 6.3. And for second stage, the value of I is equal to 5.71. You can refer the PhD page number 8.3 for this. Next one, a design of roller. Now uh, look at the figure number four, the basic roller arrangement as shown over there with the basic dimensions and important parameters. So there are three rollers, both two rollers and left side and right side, uh, one roller at left side and right side and there is a central roller. So the roller which is left and right side, we can consider as a supporting roller. And this central roller, which carries the maximum load. If you look at the figure properly, the maximum load is carried by central roller. So normally while designing the uh, bearing for this kind of rollers, uh, we are considering 70% of load is approximately carried by the central roller and the remaining load is carried by the this inclined rollers which is inclined by 20 degree as we are using truffing roller. So calculating the length between uh, two supports L is equal to uh, refer the figure number uh, 4 L plus 2 uh, L, is, L plus Twice L minus 50 is equal to 500 because total length we have a 500. 
So rearranging equation, what we get L is equal to 200. The center distance between two supports for center roller, the length of uh, center distance, uh, be, uh, sorry, the length between two supports for the center uh, roller is L is equal to 200 mm. Now next, calculating the calculation for selection of bearing. As I said, uh, we are considering the approximate 70% load of the total load carried uh, for center roller assembly. Uh, so the load per meter run acting on the roller of the upper run is equal to GG plus GB plus GRO. So the total load is 70.53 kg F per meter. The next the load on each roller assembly, if you consider only upper assembly, the load per meter run multiplied by the spacing between the rollers. Uh, referring to ESG, you get uh, spacing between uh, the rollers uh, for idler uh, upper roller, uh, upper run, we are using the spacing between the rollers are generally 1.5, okay? So the total load, uh, load on each roller uh, for upper upper assembly, that is 105.8 kgf. Now load on central roller, as we know the 70% of uh, total load, that is 70% of the total load on roller assembly, that is 105.8. So the load on central roller is 74.06 kgf. Now load on each bearing as uh, to support the roller, we need two bearings. So equally the total load is equally or whatever the load on the roller is equally divided into the two bearing. So divided by two load on central roller, roller divided by two, 74.06 divided by two. So load on each bearing is equal to 37.03 kgf. Now we need to calculate the load per meter run acting on return roller. GB plus GM is equal to near about 12.67 kgf per meter. Then load on each roller assembly for lower condition or roller, uh, lower run, load per meter run into the spacing for lower, uh, they are only supporting type of uh, roller. They are not uh, conveying any kind of power. So the spacing between these two rollers are greater than that of uh, the upper roller, upper run rollers. So here the spacing is three. So load on each roller assembly is 38 point, sorry, 38 kgf. Now for bearing, again, we have to divide it by two so that uh, load on each bearing we can calculate. So 38 divided by two, nine, that is 19 kgf. From the above two values uh, for load on bearing, the higher value, uh, which is nothing but the load on upper roller bearing. So that is 37.03 that we are going to consider. So that uh, both uh, in all location, we can using same bearing. So rather than design uh, for each condition, we are, condition, uh, we are designing the uh, bearing for critical condition, okay? So considering the higher value of the load, that is 37.03 kgf. Now, one more thing, the total load, which is acting, uh, or you can say type of load acting or on the bearing, that is axial as well as a radial. So here we are considering deep wall bearing as both we, uh, there is a possibility of load but the axial load is very negligible when, uh, while calculating the equivalent load, the axial load will be neglected. 
Now from PHG page number 4.12, uh, directly we can select the escape uh, bearing. As we have already selected the diameter of bearing that is 25 in a previous uh, in a uh, upper section. So while calculating the resistance, we have selected uh, that Tube diameter is 125 and bearing uh, diameter is 25. So the bearing outer diameter, uh, sorry, the bearing diameter is 25 and the outer diameter is 47 mm. Width 12 mm and the value of C is 780 kg F. Now just uh, <clears throat> here we are directly selected the bearing Rather than the direct selection, you can calculate the value of C and after that you can select a proper bearing. So next step is to calculating the life of bearing. The speed of bearing and bearing is equal to velocity of roller divided by pi into the diameter of roller divided by 60. So the velocity uh, speed of the bearing is equal to 320.68 RPM. Now referring PHG page number 4.2 to calculate the equivalent load. P is equal to X into FR into S plus Y into FR, FA into V. Here we are, as I said, neglecting the axial load because the, those loads, uh, the load in axial direction is very minor. That's why we are neglecting that. And the outer race is rotating. So V is equal to 1.2. Service factor S is equal to 1.2. And the value of X is equal to 1. So the equivalent load P is equal to 53.32 kg F. Referring PSG page number 4.2, calculating the dynamic load. C is equal to P. L divided by L10 raised to 1 upon K. As the value of C, which is already we have uh, that we are going to put over here, that is 780 is equal to P, value of P, that is 53.32. Life we don't know. L10, it should be a complete 1 million revolution. So it is 1 raised to K is equal to 3 for well wearing or for roller bearing, it is a 10 by 3. Sorry, 3 by 10. So now the bearing life L is equal to 3130.5 million revolution. Now convert it, it's in a hour. So L million revolution equal to LH into N into 60 divided by 10 raised to 6. So putting all the values, what we get, the value uh, life in hours, which we get are 1,61,609.74 hours. If you consider the load, uh, that much life is expected. Now next, while designing the roller, rollers are uh, normally a fail in a bending stress. So here we are going to calculate the bending stress in the roller. F uh, refer figure number five, where the consider bearing rollers are, uh, sorry, assuming the roller to be simply supported beam, as per shown in figure, we have drawn the bending moment diagram as, as well as the reaction. Everybody, uh, please uh, look this diagram carefully. Okay. Okay, from figure, uh, as I said, uh, we are calculating the bending stress. Sigma P is equal to M into Y divided by I. And that is uh, M is equal to WL by 4 into Y divided by I is equal to pi by 64 d raised to 4 minus d, d raised to 4. So putting all the values what you get, 
the value of sigma b the induced value of sigma b is equal to 0 0.4251 newton per mm square now the uh, we haven't yet select the material uh, before calculation you can choose the material or after the calculation based on the induced stress you can uh, select the material so in this design i'm selecting uh, material for roller is c20 as the industrial stress is very less next designing the shaft refer figure number uh, okay as a, to calculating the diameter of shaft we need to consider tensions because again it is uh, going to fail into the bending so maximum bending stress is equal to t1 plus t2 into l divided by 4 so putting all the values what you get maximum bending stress is equal to 2.5 6 6 into 10 raised to 6 newton mm now power power as we have selected the standard motor having power of 18.5 kilowatt so p is equal to 2 pi nt by 60 now from this equation what we get a torque okay so putting all the values the torque t is equal to 4239.55 newton meter or you can say 4.239 into 10 raised to 6 newton mm now based on uh, this we have to calculate the equivalent torque so square root of t square plus maximum bending stress square so equivalent torque what we get is 4.955 into 10 raised to 6 newton mm now we are selecting the material for shaft that is c45 having value of design tau is equal to 45 newton per mm square t equivalent is equal to pi by 16 into ds cube into tau putting all the values so d is equal to 82.60 uh, 46 mm now we can modify it to the standard value ds is equal to 85 mm if you want you can recalculate and calculate the induced sigma induced tau value next one the last point selecting the take up arrangement it is a very important as we discussed uh, previously also uh, in a theory part take up system is very important because uh, it can maintain the initial tensions in between uh, these two pulley segment uh, in between these two pulley and the belt here uh, there are different uh, take up systems are available so out of that uh, i have selected a gravity type of take up system because in that uh, the arrangement is as shown in figure number seven the gravity type of take up system it is directly connected with the uh, lower one pulley uh, which is uh, connected with the weights so that as soon as the tension is reduced the weight because of that weights it, it is directly get managed okay uh, up to the particular level so whenever uh, that level reaches uh, we need to reduce the uh, string length so that again we can use the same uh, mechanism for uh, maintaining the further tension okay so i hope uh, you have understood design properly uh, refer problem number one and problem number two so that uh, there are uh, some change in method i have tried uh, so whichever which method uh, whichever from problem number one or problem number two whichever the method uh, you feel which is easy you can follow that method uh, the design of belt conveyor is quite uh, easy if you have a proper understanding uh, proper knowledge of the PHG because we have to select a standard pulley then belt uh, then bearings uh, then materials also we have to select a proper motor so these uh, so that you are always having a proper knowledge related to PSG so that it can be easily 
uh, easily you can ch choose this is standard components okay i hope you will understood uh, the problem number two also uh, i request all of you you can uh, start uh, completing the assignment number two and uh, i hope you have completing the design a uh, cad model uh, for eot crane now next you can complete your assignment and upload to the google classroom okay okay thank you very much if you have any doubt you can contact me anytime thank you